Okay, so partial derivatives is what we're talking about today. We're going to do a little bit of a quick review. What I want to review is what is the meaning of the derivative? So this is a time for audience participation. Meaning of a derivative? Yeah, the slope of the tangent line, the slope at a, at a point on the curve. Okay, so here's what we're doing today. First of all, can you all see that, the thinner one now? You can read it just fine, because I felt like the other one was a little too much for me. Okay, so what we've been looking at recently is when we've been looking at functions of two variables, sometimes three variables. So today, we are going to look at a function of two variables, x and y. And what we are asking, for example, is what happens to x when we hold y constant? In other words, how is x changing? What is the rate of change of x if y is held constant? This is called a partial derivative. So that's what we're going to be looking at. If we hold y constant, what's the derivative with respect to x? If we hold x constant, what's the derivative with respect to y? And like I said, it's called a partial derivative. So that leads us to the following definition. Let's consider z, which is some function of x and y. Then the first partial derivatives of f with respect to x and y. They're denoted by the following. f with a subscript of x. That's the first partial with respect to x and f with a subscript of y, that's the first partial with respect to y. And these are defined by the following. Before I write them, do you remember what the definition of a derivative involves from BC? Yeah, it has a limit in it. So the first partial with respect to x is gonna be the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h comma y minus f of x y. So we notice y is held constant over h. Similar, if we want the first partial with respect to y, again, the limit as h approaches zero. If we want the limit, or if we want the first partial with respect to y, we're holding x constant. So this will be f of x comma y plus h minus f of x, y, all over h. And this is, of course, provided that the limit exists. So here is our first example. Our function f of x, y, wow, that is really bad handwriting, is 3x subtract x squared y squared plus 2x cubed y. You all have used definition of uh, derivatives before. We're not going to use the definition. We are just going to calculate derivatives like you did before. If I'm looking for the per first partial with respect to x, the way that you're going to go about that is you are going to treat y like a constant. You're going to treat y like a constant. So if I take the derivative of 3x with respect to x, I get x. 
For that second term, y squared is a constant, so ignore it for right now. The derivative of x squared would be 2x, so that would give us 2xy squared. Okay, then the last term, y, is a constant, so ignore it. The derivative of 2x cubed is going to be 6x squared, and then we bring the y. So that is the first partial with respect to x. If we look at the first partial with respect to y, it's going to be a similar idea, except that we treat x like a constant. So that first term of 3x is a constant. If we take the derivative of a constant, we get 0. So that one disappears. Now we're on to the second term. The derivative of y squared is 2y. So that will be negative 2x squared y. Or you could put the y first if that makes you more comfortable. Last term, we have 2x cubed y. That's basically a number times y. If we take the derivative, we are just left with the constant. That is the idea of a partial derivative. Or that's at least how we go about finding them. Questions before we uh, discuss some notation? Andrea? No. You should know it, but I'm not going to ask you to do it because been there, done that, you guys have done that. There's no need to do it again. Okay, let's talk about notation. This is something that I'm going to be very picky about per normal, so I want to make sure we know all of the proper notation. First partial with respect to x is sometimes written like this, f of x. Now, do you all remember that when you all did derivatives, sometimes you used just y prime, sometimes you might use dy dx, and dy dx said I'm differentiating y with respect to x. There's a similar notation, but we do need to somehow uh, denote that it's a partial derivative, that it's a derivative with respect to one variable and not both. The way you do that is like this. That tells us it's a partial derivative. So that is uh, a lowercase delta. It's kind of like a fancy D. You also might have the partial with Z partial of z with respect to x, or z with a little x. And this would be in the case where we have some z that is a function of x and y. So any of those mean partial derivative with respect to x. You will see both. I don't care the notation you use, but you do need to be able to recognize them. And then if we are going to evaluate, there is specific notation for that. For example, I might evaluate the partial derivative of z with respect to y at the point a, b. So that is telling me, take the partial with respect to y and substitute it in a, b. questions before we do some more examples and look at the meaning of these. Okay. So let's talk about the next one. If we have example number two, our function of x and y is x e to the x squared y. So we are going to find the first partial with respect to x first partial with respect to y, and we are going to evaluate both at the point 1 comma natural log of 2. So if we find the first partial with respect to x, the first thing that you should hopefully recognize is that you're going to have to use the product rule. So we'll have to take the derivative of the first part, the second part. Derivative of x is just 1, so we have 1 times e to the x squared y. Then we have x 
if I take the derivative of e to the x squared y. Okay, so derivative of x squared is 2x, but then remember that that y is a constant that comes with it. So we're going to have 2xy e to the x squared y. So that simplifies to e to the x squared y plus 2x squared y e to the x squared y. And if we evaluate that at the point 1 common natural log of 2, I get e to the power natural log of 2 plus 2 natural log of 2 e to the natural log of 2. Okay, if we remember, or if we can evaluate e to the natural log of 2 is just 2, this becomes 2 plus 2 times 2 is 4 natural log of 2. So then if we find the first partial with respect to y, remember that x squared or any x is a constant. So we have e to some constant times y. Using the chain rule, that constant is going to have to come down. So we already have the x constant. We bring the x squared down, and then we get e to the x squared y. So that becomes x cubed e to the x squared y. That's our first partial with respect to y. And if we plug in 1 comma natural log of 2, we're going to get 1 times e to the natural log of 2, which is just 2. Questions? No? We can keep going? Ooh. Okay. We do need to know what the meaning of these derivatives or what the meaning of those numbers are. So we're going to take a few minutes to talk about geometrically what this means. So let's say that we have our x, our, our three space going on. And we have some curve. That's going to be my curve. And I'm going to call that z, and that z is some function of x and y. OK, so here's what's going to happen. We are going to have some point that we are concerned about, or one, some point that we are focusing on. So this is going to be the point x comma y. And what we're going to do is we are going to figure out where that point falls on our curve. So about right there, let's say. Okay. The partial of f with respect to x is going to be how x is changing when we hold y constant. So that'll be about here. This will be the partial of f with respect to x, which in our case is the slope of the tangent line. In other words, the partial of f with respect to x is going to be the slope in the x direction, the one that is parallel to the x-axis, So basically, we're taking a plane parallel to the x-axis, cutting it through the figure, figuring out what the slope of that line is. That's what we're doing. So here's realistically how that's going to look to you. You could very blatantly be told to find the slopes. So find the slopes in the x and y directions at the point 1 half comma 1 
for z, which is some function of x and y, defined by negative 1 half x squared minus y squared plus 25 over 8. So what we're going to do is we are going to find those slopes and we are going to discuss what they mean or write what they mean. Okay, if I take the derivative with respect to x, I'm holding y constant. So y squared is a constant, that goes away, 25 over 8 goes away, so we just get negative x. If I take the first partial with respect to y, that term negative 1 half x squared goes away because it's just a constant, and we get negative 2y. So now I am evaluating these first partials at 1 half comma 1. So in the x direction, I get negative 1 half. In the y direction, I get negative 2. Okay, this is a slope. So in our case, it's telling us how z is changing with respect to x and how z is changing with respect to y. So that negative 1 half tells us that z decreases one unit for every two unit increase in x at this point. Similar idea with y. z decreases by two units for every one unit increase in y. Again, at this point. I'm gonna be very picky on a, on a test. I will want the word decrease decrease and increase, and I will want to know at this point. Okay. So that is partial derivatives and what they mean. Any questions before we add on a little bit? No? Okay. Add on then. If we have functions of three or more variables, we're not going to do any examples. I'm just going to tell you that it's a similar idea. If there's three variables and you're finding the partial with respect to one, hold the other two constant. So same idea. We got two, two more things to talk about. The next one is what is called higher order partial derivatives. So we're going to start with some notation and then we'll look at two examples. So for example, let's say I take the partial of f with respect to x and I want to take the derivative again with respect to x. One way to denote this is this is the second derivative of f with respect to x, which I can also write as fxx. Or maybe I want to take that first partial of f with respect to x, and I want to take the derivative of again, this time with respect to y. So first of all, this is called a mixed partial just so you know. That notation is saying I take the derivative with respect to x, or I already have, and then I'm going to do y. The notation for that is f of x, y. What is important for you to remember is that x comes first, then y. So we're going to do two examples with this. Let's suppose that we have some function 
of three variables, so f of x, y, z, and that's equal to y e to the x plus x, na no, nope. I just totally skipped an example, so don't write that down. Okay, try this again. We are going to find f of xx, f of yy, f of xy, and f of yx for the following function f of xy, which is 3xy squared minus 2y at 5x squared y squared. So, of course, this should be pretty intuitive. You're going to have to find the first partials first. So if I take the first partial with respect to x, holding all the y's constant, I'm going to get 3y squared plus 10xy squared. And if I take the first partial with respect to y, holding all the x's constant, I'm going to get 6xy minus 2 add 10x squared y. Are we good with that so far before I keep going? Okay, so f of x, x just means take the derivative again with respect to x. So if we use our f of x, the first term will go away because it's a constant. So we'll just be left with 10y squared. f of y, y means take our f of y and take the derivative again with respect to y, again keeping x constant. And we get 6y plus 10, nope, plus, yeah, 10x squared. The next one in the list, f of x, y. That means take the derivative with respect to x. Would it be 6x, not 6y? Yes, thank you. This one should be a 6x. Okay, so f of x, y, take the derivative with respect to x, <coughs> then with respect to y. So we're using this one, which already we differentiate with respect to x, now with respect to y, and we will get 6y <coughs> plus 20xy. And then f of y, x, take the derivative with respect to y, then with respect to x. So we're using the first partial with respect to y. Differentiating with respect to x, and we get 6y plus 20xy. So your natural question should be, f of x, y, and f of y, x, are they always going to be equal? Like they are here, or was that just a coincidence? Before I answer that, any questions on how I came up with any of those four? No? Okay. Here's a quick theorem then for us. If f is a function of x and y such that f of x, y, and f of y, x are continuous on an open disk R, then for every point x, y, and R, f of x, y of x, y is going to be equal to f of y, x of x, y. It's very wordy. All it means is we care if the function is continuous. So the only time that those mixed partials are not going to be equal is when we're looking at points where the function is not continuous or where the partials are not continuous. Okay, so next example, this time 
this is the one I was writing before, we're having a function, or we're going to consider a function of three variables, f of x, y, z, and we have y e to the x plus x natural log of z. We are going to show that f of x, z, z is equal to f of z, x, z, which is equal to f of z, z, x. So for the first one, remember, that means take the derivative with respect to x, then z, then z again. What I want us to do at this point is I want you to calculate all three. So here are our three answers. All three should be the same. Like it says in green, that tells us the order doesn't matter. So fun fact. Questions about how I found any of the three. No? Okay. We have one more example that is really going to test what you remember from calc last year. It is a special kind of differentiation. Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Is it parts? Integral? Ooh, that's a rough one. Integration by parts? Is that what you refer yeah. to? Come on, special differentiation? Nobody? Implicit. Yep. Last thing we are talking about is implicit partial differentiation. Now, of course, if you don't remember implicit differentiation, implicit partial differentiation isn't going to be any better. Okay, so let's just, you know, keep that in mind. This is our last example for these notes. Last example is to go over implicit partial differentiation. Okay, so we are going to find the slope. Before I write the question, when do we use implicit differentiation? Huh? Uh, there's always two variables, at least, if not more. Can you give me an example of when you would have used implicit differentiation? It's not an equation, so. <laughs> 2xy equals a number. 2xy equals 7. Yeah, exactly. When you don't have a function. Oftentimes, it's an equation where we can't easily get a function, not <coughs> one like 2xy equals 7. But normally, it's something where we can't easily get a function. So find the slope of, in this case, we're looking at the sphere. That is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. We are going to be looking in the y direction. So the slope in the y direction at the point 2 thirds, 1 third, 2 thirds. Before we jump right into finding that slope, we should probably talk about a strategy. Slope in the y direction. So we're going to need the partial with respect to y of each side. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And we're going to need the partial with respect to y of 1. So that's going to be our strategy. Our goal, ultimately, is we're looking for the partial of z with respect to y. And of course, this means that we are holding x constant. OK, I'm going to do this in a little bit of a cumbersome manner so that you can understand exactly what each part piece means, because I have a feeling we don't remember a lot of this from calc. So I'm going to take the partial with respect to y of x squared, and I'm going to take the partial with respect to y of y squared. I'm going to take the partial with respect to y of z squared, and the partial with respect to y of 1. Okay, we've already said that x is constant. 
So differentiating x with respect to y is just going to give us 0. x is being held constant. It's not changing. The derivative of y squared is 2y. But then I have the partial of y with respect to y. Last year, you probably didn't write that. Okay, so then if I take the derivative of z squared, that's 2z, and I'm differentiating z with respect to y. On the right side, the derivative of a constant is just 0. Okay, I write this part, partial of y with respect to y, that's just 1. So you don't really technically need to write that, but I think it helps us understand sometimes where that comes from. So this is 2y plus 2z partial of z with respect to y equals 0. So we are looking for the partial of z with respect to y. If we solve for that, we're going to get negative y over z. So that is our derivative. But then, of course, if we remember, the question is asking us to evaluate that at 2 thirds one-third, two-thirds. So that gives us negative one-third over two-thirds, or negative one-half. So that is the change in the y direction. So again, z is decreasing by one every time y increases by two. Do we remember implicit differentiation now that we went through that? Questions for me?